All right, here we go. Yo, Los Angeles. We in L.A. right now. L.A., baby, what's up? Everything good. Got to hang out with you the other night. You did. Yep. Yo, guys, Vlad hung out with me at the comedy club and then went and hung out after that. Yep. And we hung out with Jeremy Piven. With Jeremy me, Piven. You, Jeremy Piven and yep. his friends, and we were talking comedy, all kinds of stuff. And now you and Jeremy Piven are talking with each yeah. other, like hanging out. Maybe he's going to be on the show. You never know. It yeah, did, I mean, yeah. a bunch of other people were there. Um, who else? We had Ari Spears. Ari Spears was Ari there. Ari Spears. Um, Sherry Shepard. Sherry Shepard. Yep. Um, TMZ came by. Yep. <laughs> so you was in the mix at the Laugh Factory. I was in the mix. <laughs> Vlad was... It's so funny because Vlad, when he hangs out, he actually looks like he doesn't want to be there. <laughs> and, and, and I look at Vlad because Vlad has that face, that stoic Russian face. So you don't know because I'm like, I think Vlad wants to go. He goes, no, nah, I'm hanging out. Let's do it. But there's no like excitement in his face. He's so Russian. He's like, no, I want to hang. Can't wait. This is fun. Oh, man, what great comedy show. I can't believe it. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Uh, uh, uh. And I go, hey, you want something to drink? Oh, I can't wait to drink. Corona. I like very much. That's what I drank. And I say, hey, we're going to, I say, we're going to go smoke cigars. Oh, great. Cigars. Can't wait. Smoke cigars. Be very fun. I say, we're going to go to this cool, we went to that really cool hotel. Mm -hmm. Nice little private little hotel. With, with Jeremy, and he goes, I can't wait, go, let's go. And he, and he hung out the whole day. All night. That was awesome. That was great. Great yeah. night. It was a great uh, night. Great night. And yeah. uh, by the way, you killed it that night. Appreciate you that. Had, there was a lot of other comedians on that bill. Yes. You know, big names. Yes. Established acts. Yes. But I'm going to say that just because you're my friend. Yes. That you had the standout show that night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. and you tore the crowd down. <sighs> Beyond what anybody did. Uh, you know, I try to bring that New York shit to L.A. You know, when I come in, I let motherfuckers know uh -huh. the New York is in the building. You know what I'm saying? And 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 Aries is, a, is from the, the East Coast and all that. But a lot of cats have been in L.A. for so long. I don't live here. <laughs> I used to at one time, but I like that I'm really that. I just bring in that New York energy and you know what I mean? It's like and it felt good. And that was a great show. So. Well. Let's talk about the Aerie Spears performance yes. that night. That was the first time I've actually seen him do stand-up. Okay. And uh, I could honestly say, and you know, me and Aries are, are cool. He's been on here yeah, yeah, twice. I want to get him back. That's my man. But I definitely cringed during some of some what? of his Why'd routine. Why did you cringe? When he, when he started getting into it with, with like, <laughs> I guess, a heckler, like that one white, white girl or something. Oh, yeah, he don't fuck around. Yeah, because he started going in on like the rape jokes and the, I thought it was hilarious. all of that. But he went in. He was purposely pushing the envelope because Aries has is, is been doing comedy twenty plus years, and he's from the old school. You know, he did Def Jam at 15, 16 years old. You can see you didn't know that. I did not know that. Man, you can look up Aries Spears, and he's skinny. Aries is a little <laughs> kid. Look, look up Aries, man. Look up Aries Spears. I don't know if you're going to show that in this interview, but Aries Spears was doing Def Jam at 15, 16 years old, man. You know what I mean? He was, but, but yeah, look, man. Aries has been doing this shit a long time. So when you got some, what, some, it was, yeah, it was. It yeah, was th this is him right here. Ari look at, look at him, little handsome kid. Look at Aries Spears. <laughs> And his voice is all high pitched, and he's yeah, he took chances. But Aries has, has earned his keep as a stand up comic. Mm -hmm. Aries is a monster comic and a monster impersonator. Um, even when you brought my name up, I think when Aries was on here about me in person, Aries was like, Anyway, I saw that dumb expression <laughs> he made. He was like, And I even told Aries, I said, Aries, you, you hating on me, you don't think my impersonator. I, I, my listen, Aries, Aries makes his impersonations known. You know he's known for that with with the LL Cool J with the DMX and the mm -hmm. Method Man hit that he does that whole fantastic run of different rappers. Um, he's known for that. I'm not super known for impersonations, but I, my impersonations are pretty tight. The ones that I do, mm -hmm. you know. And um, Aries um, shut that girl down because honestly, white women are the ones fucking up comedy. That's real talk. Hmm. White women are the ones, and I'm saying it. White women, I call them Decepticons. You guys are Decepticons because they're the only ones, they're always the, anytime, like with Louis C.K., when Louis C.K. 
performs, you know, because Louis has been through this controversy. But when Louis C.K. comes down to New York at the Comedy Cellar, whenever he performs, white women are the ones outside protesting. White women are the ones getting up and leaving. White women are the ones complaining and yelling out shit and bitching about everything. I'm not saying every white woman, but every time somebody bitches, it's white women all the time. And these are the same people, the same group of people that voted Trump in. 53% of them voted for Trump. You know, they, they complain about sexual harassment, but 53% of you voted for fucking Trump, which does not, doesn't make sense. So when that white girl said something and uh, uh, to, to Aries, it was just this whole, because everybody, they're trying to police comedy. Because comedy is the last form of really like free speech. It's actually, comedians are saviors. We're, we're trying to talk about the ills of the world in our own way. But white women are trying to police shit where there's like, it's, you can't say this, you can't say that. But white women are calling police on black children selling lemonade. Mm. Fuck you. You know what I mean? White women are calling the police on, on, on. There's a white woman. If there's a video of a white woman pulling a gun on a black couple in a park, pulling a gun out on a black couple in a park. You know, white women are doing a lot of fucked up racist ass shit themselves, yet complaining about shit and have the nerve to come into comedy you know what I mean? To come into comedy and tell you, oh, I'm offended by this. I'm offended. No, we're offended by what the fuck you're doing. You know what I mean? So Aries shut that shit down. He was like, uh, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, and I like that he got super edgy because he's letting you know, yo, you're not gonna fuck this, stop my stop this flow. I've been doing this shit too long. And the way the the way the industry is now, a, a lot, they're trying to police what's actual funny and edgy. And what's, what's fucked up is that like comedy is actually addressing what is really going on in people's minds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like people say, I'm offended, but bitch, you racist though. Fuck out of here. Hmm. You act like police brutality is gone. Like, what are you doing up? Everybody will bitch about a joke. Oh, I'm offended, offended. But nobody is stepping up when black men are getting killed by cops on the street on video, when black women are getting slammed on the ground by fucking white cops that are slamming teenage black women on the ground, handcuffed, in front of their mothers. They're not complaining about that, but they're complaining about a motherfucking joke, though, which you have every right to talk about at a comedy club. You're at a comedy club. You're doing the right thing in a comedy. It's kind of ironic to bitch about a joke in a comedy club. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Where the fuck were you? What line were you in when logic was being passed out? <laughs> How are you bitching about a joke at a comedy club, motherfucker? Like... If I was at a, in a library or um, let's say I'm at a, a, a benefit and I'm making a speech and I make an inappropriate joke, then you can go contextually, you can say, you know what? That wasn't right. You should not talk about kids with big ass heads. That's wrong. This is, this is a benefit for waterhead kids. <laughs> so uh, you know what? You're right. I get that. But I'm at a motherfucking comedy club where you have to be, I think, 21 and older to drink, yeah. where you're an adult. And 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 every and and this is this should be a place where you go. You know what? Whether you talk about race, gender, and also remember this: as a comedian, you should be responsible. It is an art form. Here's the problem: people do not treat comedy as an art form yet. Hmm. It is an art form. Oh yeah. See, like if if we talk about like massacres, okay? We talk about massacres. And somebody draws paintings that you go to a museum and, and there's paintings about massacres. Everyone's like, wow, look at these paintings. Look at, look at all the meaning behind all the violence. No one says shit because it's in an art museum, right? You can sing a song about massacres and wow, what a great song. That may but as soon as you do comedy about massacres, it's like, you can't be joking about that shit. No, yes, I fucking can. I'm like Picasso. I'm like Bruce Springsteen. I'm an artist, motherfucker. Comedy is the hardest form of entertainment, by the way. So I, that's the only way to express how I feel about the world. But, well, yeah. two jokes. I, I remember I had Guy Tori yes. on my that's show my here. Man. And we talked about how he was making jokes about Tupac getting shot the day after he got right. shot. Right, And then you know, he ended up, you know, we're talking about the Las Vegas shooting where he ended up dying, yeah. yes. like, you know, a few days later. And, you know, he... He didn't deny it. He goes, yeah. But how did Guy Tory do it? It depends on yeah. how you do it. He basically, he, he kind of broke down what happened. I guess yeah. there was like 
some wo- some woman had d- done like a, a pledge of allegiance you know, uh, song at like a baseball right. game or something. Right. It was so bad right. that he was like, yeah, you know, they weren't trying to shoot Tupac. They were trying to shoot that lady with a badass singing voice. Pac used to always come to Fat Tuesdays. And so, you know, he got, he got shot at the Tyson fight that weekend in Vegas. So at Tuesday, I'm like, I got to address it. But how can I address it and not bring the mood of the audience down? Right? So I remember that night there was a singer who sang the national anthem. I think his name was Desi. I think he was managed by Tyson's management. And it was a you know, light skin, El Debar's looking dude with the suave hair and the cream suit or whatever. And he was fucking horrible. He was horrible. So I went on stage like, yo, you heard Tupac got shot, man. You know, I hope everything is all right. I said, you know, I think it was a case of mistaken identity. I said, they wasn't trying to shoot Tupac. They were trying to shoot that nigga who sang the national anthem. And when I said that, the place erupted, and I went on with the joke. And then so I, I addressed it, and I moved on. Didn't bring the mood down to the room, and moved on with the night. But, but see, the joke was about the lady singing the anthem, not yeah. about Tupac getting shot. But people want to take that and go, man, you can't be, yo, motherfucker, did you hear the jo-? Here's the thing about jokes which really pisses me off. Sometimes people need to realize, hey man, you're just too dumb to understand the joke. Just say, hey man, I was too stupid to understand the joke. You, first of all, jokes, there's parts to jokes. You, you start off with the premise. Sometimes you'll bring up a person's name. Like, you know, you heard about this girl, about X Extension. This girl named, what's her name? Right, we're actually gonna talk about this. So let's oh, go okay. ahead and get into okay. it. So it's a good transition. Comedian, Dina, Hashem. Hashem, right. Hashem made a joke about XXX and Tassion. I, she made a joke. It, it was okay. And, yeah. and so let me just break down the joke mm-hmm. a little bit because I Go watched ahead. it. Yeah. So I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit. Did, yes. you, did you watch the actual? I watched the joke. Okay, yeah. yeah. So the joke was basically. XXX and Tassion had like 50000 in cash because he was going to yeah. go buy like a new motorcycle yeah. and he got killed for the cash. And right. Wouldn't that be a great commercial for Venmo? Right. It's a it's a, it's a dark fucked up joke, and that's the chances you take. And I listened to the joke and I said, okay, I got what she was trying to do—a Venmo joke. Yeah, that's what she was trying to do. But the fact that X Extension, what he means to millennials. See, the thing about sometimes people are gonna take one word and go, "Yo, man, you can't be saying that shit about him. That's not funny." I understand she was trying to do a, a Venmo joke. But the disrespect was bringing him up, and he just got killed for no fucking reason. I understand the offense, but I understand what she was trying to do. Okay. You know what I mean? She's trying to do a Venmo joke. And that girl mm-hmm. is a, she's a, she's a rap, she's a, 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 a roast battle comedian. Hmm. Yeah, she roast battles. She wins. She's a, she does, she talks about motherfuckers. She's a twisted motherfucker. She does dark jokes, fucked up jokes. So that's her lane. And sometimes when you do jokes like that, you're gonna piss people off. I've done, I had a joke. I have a joke about rape, a rapist, right? Cause I'm an edgy comic. Mm-hmm. I'm an edgy dude. Everybody has a different type of edge. So I do a joke about, a, a, um, um, when I first moved to New York City, there was a, a East Side rapist. You know how the Fifth Avenue divides the East and the West. Mm-hmm. There was an East Side rapist. I'm coming from Chicago, East Side rapist. I said, damn, that's specific as fuck. You know, so if he chases you and you get to the West, he's like, you lucky, girl. I only rape on the East. Shit, the West, I don't fuck with that. That's the joke. And and if you and there's a video of me being arguing with a heckler. Oh, yeah, we talked about that in our first it, interview. Yeah, It was because of that joke that they this lady was like, you can't talk about rape. I go, bitch, first of all, did you even get the joke? I said, the description of the rapist was stupid. Because how are you going to say the East Side rapist? So that means... He ain't going to go to the West. That was the joke, but they heard the word rape. Okay. See, comedian... Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. Would you make jokes about XXX and Tassio dying? If, if it depends... Dying? Not dying. Because... But see, I'm... Because I'm her joke is about him getting killed. And right, Venmo. him getting killed, but she's trying to find, she's trying to make the joke slick by saying it's a good Venmo. It's, she's trying to make a Venmo joke by using his name. 
using his his murder his murder which yeah. was dangerous which this is the this is what she's getting some people are not going to take that shit that's the chance you take as a comedian i'm not in her brain yeah. she is a comedian motherfucker so i've come up with shit where people go i i came up like there's a joke i did about catholic uh church i shit on catholic church because i went to catholic school and it fucking sucked <laughs> and then i went to a racist catholic school i mean are you fucking kidding me kumbaya my lord you know you blacks what wait a minute weren't we just praising god i mean you know what i mean i went to school where they thought you know where people think jesus is white i mean come on but you know what i'm saying i i did a joke and i had people get up and get mad and go i don't appreciate you talking about you know the catholic church you know but yet little boys are getting fucked by priests i mean what are you talking about you know what i mean but as comedians we take chances it's the, it's what it is and she's getting blowback from what she did listen i'm not in her brain i can't tell it what a, i can't tell a comedian what to do or what to say but what if the joke worked what if the joke was brilliant i mean it's the chance you take man nowadays everybody's offended by everything everything yep. it doesn't matter you know why i got fired off of sirius xm you want me to tell you how i got fired off of sirius xm well, let's hear because it. i okay here's what happened uh, for those who know, I was on the Godfrey Complex, Sirius XM, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I got fired about three, four weeks ago, okay? okay. I'm done, all right? Now I'm on the Yada Mean Podcast, motherfucker, with Lord Jamar and Raw Digger, Boom. bitch. And I'm on Vlad, so fuck them all. But I got fired, and I, listen, my show was edgy, blah, 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 blah. I say a lot of things. I got fired for something that I didn't even think was that bad. And um, I was in D.C., right? Series XM lobby, come walk into the lobby, and this man who's a, a subscriber co co follows me into the lobby, says, hey, man, I'm a big fan. I'm a truck driver, and I show love to the truck drivers on Series XM. He said, hey, man, I'm a big fan. No disrespect. Can I get a picture? I say, hell yeah. He's a subscriber. He mm -hmm. puts money into the business. Yep. So there was a, a security guard, real flamboyant black dude, gay, you know, with braids. And he comes and he literally, literally, cartoonishly is rude to this guy. He goes, nah, -uh, uh, uh, no, you have to get out. No picture. Bye. He literally did it like that. I was. It sounds like I'm doing a character. He's like, uh, -uh no pictures. You can't have no pictures here. Mm -mm, nah, you can't have that. Nah. He's gay, obviously. You know. Yep. And uh, and I'm not homophobic or none of that shit. He was just. That's how he did. Ah, right, get out of here. And so I was like, and I looked at the guy. I said, wow, that's a little, that's a little rude, bro. Like, really? You can't. Have pictures. There's nobody in the lobby, and he's a subscriber. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh yeah, no, 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 no. I was like, okay, I got not. <laughs> you know. So I go on a show. Um, um, I go on a show on Sirius XM, and I express myself because the lady that asked me, um, she's like, well, yo, what's wrong with you? And we always have a cool banter, and I'm not gonna name her show. But she's like, yeah, um, what's wrong? I go, yeah, I was, I'm a little mad because I'm, I'm known for ranting on the show. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm a little mad, you know, because um, well, a subscriber that wanted a picture in the lobby was treated like shit. I didn't like that. And what, well, what happened? I said, well, this dude, you know, he was very flamboyant and shit. And he was, he, he was like very like cartoonishly rude to the subscriber. I didn't name his name at all. And I go, and I said, we should grab, well, how about we grab him by his little braids and toss him out the damn door? That was, and I, it, it was that simple. And then I said, and I want to make sure, and I said this, I said, I want to make sure that I'm not a homophobic, I don't want this, people to think this is homophobia or anything. You know, I'm talking about his character. I don't want, because a lot of times the gay community likes to throw homophobia at you when you're not being homophobic. You're literally saying, you're an asshole, bro. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they want to say you're being homophobic so they can hide behind their shitty fucking attitudes because a lot of times the gay community, there are a lot of assholes in the gay community. And, and my thing is, I'm talking about him like he's a regular person. See, there's a... There's a I, I, I just want to interrupt yeah. you for a sec. I've had... I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, like, like I'm friends with Jason from Hollywood Unlocked. Yeah. You know, yeah. openly gay dude, hella yeah. cool. We've had dinner together. Yeah, no we, we text, we call. Yeah. Cool as fuck. But I, I've had a few instances over the years where you're dealing with a gay person on some sort of business level and they just do ridiculous, disrespectful shit to yeah. you and they hide behind the gay. Well, you can't yeah. you can't say anything because I'm gay and I'll, I'll accuse you of being homophobic if you try That's to so somehow, somehow yeah. retaliate. 
you know, verbally or, or, or in any yeah. type of way. And you're like, yo, like you're really over fucking reacting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been cussed out by gay dudes for like no fucking reason. Yeah. It's just like, yo, you're hiding behind this gay yeah. shield it's because cool. any response will be like, it's gay bashing. It, like, it, no, dude, you're just being an asshole. You're just being an A asshole. A regular man would not do this to me because there would be repercussions. Right. Man to man. But you're almost acting like a woman or like, oh, well, you're not going to hit a woman because yeah. now, I think I'm a woman and I'm going to act like a woman in, in accordance to you. No, it's, a weird, a it's a weird psychology thing. It's a very thing. weird thing and, and it's yeah. sad because if you do anything about LGBTQ, if you, if, I think if you put the letters in different order, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> right. You go LGBB uh, barbecue. Uh, what, oh, God damn it. You know what I mean? Barbecue. How dare you? You put our letters wrong chronologically. You have homochronological phobia. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, <laughs> you're dyslexic. You're, you're dyslexic. Now, no, that's homo chronological etymological <laughs> alphabetical phobia. That is what it is, and I how dare you? And okay. listen, and I have friends. I have a friend, um, um, comedians that are gay, yeah. that are transgender, that I'm friends with. I am not, homophobia. Are you kidding me? I grew up around that my whole life in Chicago. I respect whatever your life is, but your character. You're an asshole is an asshole. Yeah. I know really good, I have friends, and I don't want to sound like a white dude or a white person going, I got a lot of black friends, really good black friends, especially on the basketball tape. I don't want to sound like that, but I, I, I accept, I don't like bullying of any nature, of yeah. anybody. I protect my friends, whether they're gay or whatever, if they're being bullied, but if you're being an asshole, that situation, you were being fucking rude, and that's what I was saying. And here's another thing. Wait, 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 and okay. you got fired for that comment? I got fired for that. Because but he I, was an employee of SiriusXM? He was an employee of SiriusXM, but there was a subscriber. He was a security dude. He so probably he, didn't he give a fuck a, about it. I wonder us. if he was even an employee of Sirius or the employee of the building. Because usually know? the security doesn't work for... Right. You know, usually there's multiple companies in a building. And but the, I really believe it was just a thing where it was a cumulative thing, where they were just waiting to find something to get me off. Because my show was getting really popular. I did. It was two hours. And I'm not... And I'm not blaming anybody but i believe there were other i think there were other elements yeah. that got me out of there which is all which is fine but i and what's funny is i started my podcast at the same time my podcast in godfrey we trust mm. on the gas digital network tuesdays and fridays 9 30 p.m you subscribe with promo code godfrey the shit is banging with my boy asian andre it's dope as hell aries has been on it you gotta come on it one day Whenever that would be want. fresh as shit. I got you. Know you know what I'm saying? It's dope as hell. You. But yeah, so it's on the Gas Digital Network, and it's it's it. I started doing my podcast at the same time because I'm not used to corporate shit. Yeah. And a lot of and and when you go to Sirius, you just see a lot of depressing faces. Everybody is on eggshells because they don't know if they're gonna be fired or not. You don't know when you're gonna be fired. I know friends that got fired from at, um Eric XM. A lot of comedians. It's so weird how they hire you for talk and then they fire you for talk. Right. This shit is weird. And they said, no, we let you talk to it. No, you don't. So it happened, but I'm glad I started the podcast and Godfrey We Trust. Oh, there we go. Well, speaking of gay people. Yeah. Lil Nas X Lil Nas. just broke the record for the longest number one song of in, all time. In history? In the history of recorded music. What? Yes. He beat out Mariah Carey and Boys to Men, One Sweet Day, what? who was tied with Daddy Yankee and Justin Bieber for the <gasps> Despacito remix. Good for him. Lil Nas X now Good. has what you could consider the biggest song of all time. Good for him. That um, country shit, right? Old Town Road. I don't know. What does he say? That take I, my horse to the Old Town Road. Take my horse to the Old Good for him. Ride till I can't no Good. more. Good. Can ride to Good for little Nas. Right. You know, I hope it helps Big Nas, too. Cause yeah. That, just that name. Yeah, well, I remember when I pointed out that Big Nas has never had a song as big as, big as uh, Lil Nas, and everyone got all out, outraged Real, over the you shit. You love starting trouble with Nas. Why do you I like do. fucking with Nas? Hey, man, because I'm a fan. I'm, I know? love Nas. I'm, and we're going to talk about his new album in a second. But yeah. Lil Nas X. Good for him, man. The longest number one song on the, the Hot 100 fantastic. charts of all You know why I'm happy? Because he's black. Because you know me. Right on, brother. Get your shit on and ride your horse till the goddamn wheels fall off. Good for him. Yeehaw, fucker. Good <laughs> job for you. I'm glad you did it. And Billy Ray Cyrus is on the map again. Oh, yeah. Billy Ray is smart. That boy, Billy Ray knows how to parlay. 
Oh, Billy yeah. Ray knows how to play with his daughter. He he knew you know he he know how to parlay with his daughter Miley. That fucker man. And now he's probably this is another re. Oh yeah. He's so huge. Yeah. Well, you know, since last time Lil Nas X came out as gay. Right. Which didn't really surprise anybody. Okay. Were you surprised? I mean, were you I like, no, not him? Well, my thing is, I don't even give a fuck. You I'm don't give like, a fuck. I yeah. mean, motherfuckers wearing cowboy boots and spangles, leave them alone. Like, yeah. I don't care. First of yeah. all, if they ever do a village people reboot, you know. Right, right. right. <laughs> he might be the cowboy. <laughs> He's the cowboy, right. First of all, my thing is this come, I like when cats come out and, and, and speak their truth. Speak their truth instead of holding it and being angry. Right. There's a lot of motherfuckers you know and they need to come out. You know what I'm saying? I love that little Nas came out. And fucking right on. You know what? Guess what? Guess what happened? Little Nas came out and guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Good for you. Like, Absolutely you have the biggest song in the world. Nothing. You crushed. And you know what I mean? I, I, I support another brother, whether gay or not, you still a black man. And good for you, man. I'm glad you smoked Timberlake and, and Bieber and all those fucks. Good. I'm glad it's not I'm not insulting them, but fuck you guys. I'm glad a black man's on top. Good for you, God dang it. Little Nas. Yay. Good for him. You know, it's beautiful. He, the other day, uh, he tweeted, wow, man. Last year, I was sleeping on my sister's floor. Oh, had no great. money. Good struggling to get plays on my music. Good. Suffering from daily, daily headaches. Now I'm gay. Now, that's what he said? <laughs> yeah. Is he suffering now I'm gay? <laughs> well, he had headaches because he never came out. And now yeah. he has money. Now he's. I hope he parlays it well, and I hope his career flourishes. Good for you, dude. Shit, I'm, I, I, there's nothing negative about. I like that. I think it's brave when you come out. That shit. That's manhood to me, man. You you face your truth. Like I'm gay. All right, next. What's your next song, bro? Yeah. Cheated on my baby. You can go and ask her. Yeah. Because there was a guy that I cheated on her with. Oh, he cheated on. Yeah. Well, it's so weird when you when you cheat. hear the song. When somebody cheats on us the same sex. Is that cheating? What is that? It's like <laughs> you don't. You're like, oh, should I feel bad? You're like, oh, okay. You know, it's almost like it's like you. It's not a loss. You're like, okay, that's a forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a forfeit. It's like a draw. <laughs> It's like a draw. Like if like, I'm not if I jealous was, at all. Right. If I was with a chick and she goes, "Man, I cheated on you with a chick." That's a forfeit. That's I, cool. That's not. It, I can do over. That's a do over. That's that's like so it's like you know it's like a soccer game. One one. We're one one. We're one one and one. It's a push. <laughs> it's a push. Yeah. I don't feel that bad. And then you go like this. You know if I if I if I had a girl that cheated with another girl, I go. Can I come in too? Can I join? I mean, I would love, wouldn't mind coming in this one. You know what I mean? Probably not, though. Probably not. Yeah, right. But so it's a forfeit. It's a forfeit. <laughs> you can't beat them. You Who join them, right? Fight the girl, like yeah. fight the other girl. <laughs> you cheat on my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> ah. yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't really. You can't win that one unless it's a unless it's a lesbian that looks just like me. I go, damn, she got. A, she like got a, a, she got a hardcore like, like hardcore a, like butch, a, like a young ma. That if it looks like if she looks really manly, maybe I'll get pissed. But <laughs> young ma look like she could fight. Like I remember I met her, oh, you know, uh, last year or so. Yeah. Like we were in the elevator together, so we just started talking. Yeah. I'm like, she's kind of tall, and she yeah. used to play football in high school. Oh damn, for real. There's yeah. a picture of her with there's with the some pads girls and that everything. are that tough. And my thing is this: what do I love about my lesbian friends? My gay. I mean, we talk honestly. And my, a lot of my lesbian and gay friends are all um, performers. Hmm. So we're honest, man. I have another I have another friend, Miran. He's an Iranian. He's a Persian gay comic out of New York City. Hmm. Funny as hell. Big dude. He keeps that shit so real and honest. And his material about him being gay, he shocks people. And it's so funny to see this guy do these jokes. And everyone's all shocked. I go, but aren't you the people that are trying to be progressive? If a guy's talking about his gay life, you should not have to react in shock if you are moving on and accepting them. Mm -hmm. So that means you still haven't accepted them. I laugh like a motherfucker as it jokes. You know what I'm saying? But we're honest with each other. That's why when I, if I ever talk about the gay community, it comes from honesty and it comes from love and it comes from, it comes from real knowledge, not from just, because I don't hate and I don't give a fuck what you are. But if you're an asshole, you're an asshole and I'm going to call you out on that shit. Right. So right. don't use that to shield. You're homophobic. How? How am I homophobic when I'm actually talking to you? I didn't call you anything derogatory. You're being a dick. Period. Young Thug said Lil Nas X shouldn't have come out. What? Yeah. Which which is interesting coming from Young Thug. 
because this is a guy that wears dresses and talks about smoking penises. And <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The jokes just write themselves. So. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes you just what? You, what you smoking penises and coming out with dresses? I mean, but you got a problem with little nonsense. You got a pro- I smoke dick. You're already out, bro. Like that's like <laughs> way to fuck out. I think that he's wrong for that. I think that listen, man, to, to each his own. But if you smoking dicks, bro, like you know, you come in a room and you go, man, it smells like burnt dick. What's up? I just well, he, well, he was talking about like big, big blunts or big joints. But he calls them big ass. But, but dicks. I guess they're the size. You know, oh, he's no. comparing. Like you know no, what I mean. Like that's, when that's, do you make make you that can't comparison? Bring up a dick, and then in not your mouth. be gay. Yeah. Which if you're gay and talking about dicks, that's fine. That's cool. But don't tell Lil Nas not to come out and you smoking a big ass penis bur- a penis <laughs> penis cigar. Going, man, I don't think you should do that. Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> I don't think you nah. I don't, Man, you need to, you need to, man, you need to not do that. You gonna ruin your career doing that shit, bro. Get the fuck out of here, man. I think he's wrong. I think he's stupid. I think it, I think it's good when people come out and face their truths. Like I said, I think, uh, who are you to judge him, young thug? Come on, man. It's like fucking silly. It's like, it's like some hater shit. You know, the guy has the number. It doesn't matter at this point. He has the greatest song, the biggest song ever. Yeah. So who gives a shit? Nobody. Nobody, <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. And, you know... Leave him alone. Damn. Well, I'm just wondering, because, you know, there's also... There's the, the Tyler, the Creator thing. Tyler, Creator came he, out, too. He came out as gay as what well. His name is Tyler, the Creator. Leave him alone. That's <laughs> what he does. He's, He's not, always been in, like an odd kind of really genius kind of guy that future, doesn't give a fuck. Odd Future. Fuck what do you say? Look at the name, Odd Future. Odd, the, the crew. Dude, the, dude I, I love that he's abstract, that he's so different, and, he, and you can't figure him out. Like, what's wrong? White, white dudes and can come out, all that shit, you know, left and right, and no one says it. I think, like, it, it is true about the homophobia and the black community. I don't like to I'll say black society. There, it is the homophobia, and that shit needs to cut. We need to cut all that shit out. Everybody needs to be honest with themselves. Plain and simple. Truth needs to be truth. You're not going to change. If a motherfucker is gay, he's gay. You're not going to change him through therapy. It's what it is. Who gives a shit? Yeah, man. If you're gay, you're gay. I think people Listen, ultimately respected Lil Nas for coming out the way he did. It I obviously him. had zero effect on his music. Probably opened him up to a whole new fan base first that were probably all, wanna, ignoring him. First of all, I want to brag about our gays from the 70s and 80s. Where Our gays are better than the gays now. <laughs> I mean, come on. We have Elton John. We have Freddie Mercury. We got, you know what I'm saying? We had way, village people. We had way, our gays were way better. Our music was way better than yours. I will match up our gays against yours any day. So, man, good. Come out. Fuck all that, that, that hiding shit. It's all about honesty and, and truth. But I also think, too, that if you come out and be honest, you should be able to be honest in your artwork, too, in your art form, too. Mm-hmm. You can't be bitching about every joke on the planet. If it's all about being honest, we all should be honest together. And not to sound all like, we all should be honest together. Gays and blacks and do everybody. No. You should be honest about yourself. I should be able to talk about what the fuck I want as long as I'm respectful and I stay within the parameters of the art form. You understand? I should be able to do a gay joke as long as I'm not coming from a hateful standpoint. I should be able to do a gay joke. Mm -hmm. I have a gay joke. I do a joke about gay ghosts. (laughs) Let's hear it. I said, are there gay ghosts? Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, when gay people die, are they still gay in the afterlife? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I think it would be dope. Like, boo. Boo. Hello, I'm trying to scare you. Boo. Gay people laugh like a motherfucker, but it's not a disrespect. It's an honest, yeah. it's an honest joke. Like, I accept you. You're you're part of our community. You're part of the human family. I should be able to joke about you. My friends that are gay, they they joke about vaginas and how nasty they are. And ugh, ugh, yuck, L, yuck. And I don't give a fuck. That's how we should be able to talk. That is how acceptance happens. When you're honest, not fucking, I don't, I shouldn't have to walk on shelves because gay people are around me. They should be able, we should be able to accept, we're accepting. You know what I mean? Boom. It should be a normal thing. We all should be family and it doesn't matter, man. You know what I mean? We're artists, man. We're supposed to be able to express ourselves the way we fucking want to. You know, I just interviewed uh, Conway. Conway the Machine. He's a rapper from Buffalo. Okay. Uh, his crew, Griselda Records, was signed to Eminem. Okay. Oh yeah, I heard about. I heard that mm-hmm. crew was pretty dope. 
And, uh, you know, it's two guys in the group. I mean, it's really like three guys, but okay. two main guys, you know, uh, Conway and West Side Gun. And West Side Gun has a mixtape series yeah. called Hitler Wears Hermes. Hitler what? Her- Wears, Wears Hermes? Hermes. Okay. Yeah, with the clothing. Yeah. And, you know, he has a whole series on. Like, here's one of them right here. <laughs> this is one of his mixtape covers. Okay. Right? That would get you to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that would, and you as a Jewish man, how you feel? Well, so me, me and uh, Conway had a conversation about this, yeah. and he explained the whole thing. He said what it was was it was a takeoff of the Devil Wears Prada. Why that name? Like, why go with this whole Hitler thing? Because he was on some, you know, my brother is on some extra, like artsy, well, fly and grimy. He try to merge. He don't try. He, he do it. Like he merged all that shit. Like the grimiest, disrespectful shit ever with the most flyest, prestigious shit ever. You know what I mean? With some art, and, you know what I mean? He, and some wrestling and all that shit. He just fused all that shit in the pot like like Gumbo. You know what I'm saying? And he just, that shit was just a spinoff of like the Devil's Wear Prada movie. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like now Hitler wear her mace. You know what I mean? Oh, that's what, that's, okay. I see what so you're that's saying. That's why he flipped it. Mm. Devil wears Prada, Hitler wears her mess. Pretty smart. And it was there for the shock value. Shock value, of course. And the mixtapes aren't about white power or killing Jews or a, gas is he, chambers. Is he a white He's dude? a black guy. He's a black dude. Black dude. And um, honestly, when he explained it and when I looked at this whole thing, being Jewish myself, yeah. I said, okay, I get it. Ashkenazi, yes, sir, right? Uh, Ashkenazi, yes. yes. I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. Um, I didn't have a problem with it. Because you got it. You I got it. it. I got it. See, I see. What, I see the art and the parody this is what, and the shock this value. This is what of it. I mean. You're a, you're not a dumb dude. First off, you're not some guy. First of all, you your show. Right. And you, and, uh, and let me just say that a bunch of my family was killed by the Nazis as oh, well. well. So well, so this well, is this is me just not speaking on some abstract no, third person. Like I would have way more. Like nine of my relatives on my grandfather's yeah. side got killed. Yes, no by doubt. Nazis in World War no II. Doubt. I I understand. Yes. I, I have as much of a, a reason to hate Hitler no as doubt. anybody else. Of course else. you do. But when I saw that, I'm like, I get it. I get the art of it. Exactly. And it's like if somebody it's like if somebody talks about slavery, but it's a it's a joke that I go, oh, it makes that. I get where you if you're but, being but, right. But can a white dude do a slavery joke? Yes, they can. But it depends on who, how who, you who, lay who, it out. Have you seen a white guy do a slavery I've joke seen, recently? I've seen recently. Uh, I've not, not in the eighties. No, no, no. <laughs> Recently. Somebody did something, and it had to do with. I know Louis C.K. has the N-word joke, and it's brilliant. It's he talks about the N-word, and I go, I get where he's coming from because first of all, he's a white dude. He's half Mexican, but he looks plain white. He's half Mexican. He's half Mexican. Didn't know that Spanish was his first language. Okay. He's half- okay. He looks like what's that one fighter? The one redhead fighter dude? Not Bra. Bra. Oh, no, no. The Les- guy. The guy that Mayweather beat. Uh, Canelo. Can, right, he kind of like looks a like Canelo, Canelo a little bit. But yeah. Canelo, there are Mexicans that have red, red hair, hair right. but he looks like an Irishman. Right. But he's half Mexican. Yeah, people think he looks like me. Yeah, right. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's half Mexican, but there's a way. Like I like it when white comics do real jokes, like Bill Burr does real jokes about black and white relationships. It depends on how you lay it out. First of all, a white man should be able to talk about it because you really want to know how they feel. And when a white man knows how to craft it, not some corny ass, not some cheap shit. I'm talking about how I feel about the N-word. That's respect, especially when you're making it funny and you're making it real. Because, because see, first, first of all, black audiences, we're not like white audiences. White audiences are usually the most sensitive. They're usually sensitive. But the funny thing is, is the, the white audiences are the ones that are causing all the motherfucking pain in the world. That's what's hilarious. And they're getting offended by shit, but we're but you're the ones causing everything. Black audiences are like, yo, we're the most oppressed motherfuckers. Everybody comes at us with hate. There's nothing that's gonna offend us unless you tell it, call and say, hey, kill niggas. Then we'll be like, yo, wait a minute. You know, but other than that, we like honesty. We like honesty. Be honest, because we know how you think already. Are you willing to tell us how you really feel? So when a white comic is is smart and crafts it and is not scared, I love that shit because comedy is an art form that takes guts, man. Comedy is, here's the, here's the equation for comedy. It's time plus pain equals comedy. 
You look at Joan Rivers, who was a Jewish woman in the 60s. You mm -hmm. look at Don Rickles, who talked about black people, made fun of blacks and Mexicans. Don Rickles, right? Who Don Rickles, who his best friend was a black man for 50 years, who came, he was a good person, but he was kept it real. He made fun of everybody. Paul Mooney, Richard Pryor, look at all the greats, George Carlin. You know what George Carlin said about black people? This is what George Carlin said, who's one of my favorites. Mount Rushmore, it's Pryor, Carlin, Mooney, Cosby. Mm. You know, listen, George Carlin said this about black people. And you know, George Carlin grew up in Harlem mm. as an Irish and hung out with the Puerto Ricans and the blacks. And his mom used to say, yo, why do you always hang out with the Puerto Ricans and the blacks? He goes, they're just better. I just, they're more interesting. The whites, they're always, they just hate everybody. All they do is nigga this, spick that, this, that. I'm tired. I don't like that shit. I hang out with the blacks and the Latin Latinos. The music is better. We talk real. They're accepting. And he said the only way black people are going to get, like, change and re the only reason, way, way they're going to get freedom is through fighting back. He said the singing and the marching is not working. We're the only, he said black people, the only way he goes, my people, the Irish, this guy, we fucked people up. <laughs> That's how we got our freedom. Black people need to stop singing. This is what I'm saying. It's a white man saying this about us. Are we going to go, oh, he don't know what he's talking about? It's, it depends on how you lay the joke out. And that takes a smart comic. And there's a lot of, there's some comics that are irresponsible as fuck. And they don't know, they don't have the brain to be able to go, okay. Because I do clan jokes in front of white people. I do clan jokes. Hmm. But how am I laying it out? How are you saying this clan joke? I say Ku Klux Klan. Everyone goes, <gasps> I go, well, you act like, you're different than the Ku Klux Klan because if you don't like black people, you're no different than a Klan member. It's just Klan members are ridiculous. They're just a little, hey, man, we need a sheet. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> are we going trick-or-treating or some shit? <laughs> I can't see. Bam, bam. All right, white power. It's not white power. That's laziness. Get a fucking uniform. <laughs> but you see how you're, you see what I'm saying? You can lay out a joke depending on how you fucking present it. You know what I'm saying? Look at the Chinese. The Chinese are known for making fake chicken. They're known for, they might cook rats. Some of that shit you're eating is good as shit, but it depends on how they lay it out. Now, if they just put a rat on a plate and said, eat it, very good for you. We like eat rat. Everybody eat rat. Or dangle it. Come on, dip it in duck sauce. You're going to be like, get the fuck away from me. But they slice it up, boom, 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 put it in curry, bam. It's how you lay it out. Okay. So you, uh, you guys watch them Chinese restaurants. Don't worry, everything chicken. No worry, chicken. Yeah. Chicken, chicken in the sewer. <laughs> Don't worry where we get chicken from. Very fast chicken, all in New York City. No disrespect to Chinese people. I had Willie D on my show recently. Oh, that's my man, and I did. He 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 DM'd me. Yeah. He said, what's up, man? How you doing? I gave him my number and everything. Yeah. Because I, I talked about his making things rhyme that shouldn't be rhyme. Remember, I think, the last time? Oh, said, yeah. The, the ghetto yeah, boys yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did he make sword and paranoid rhyme? <laughs> right. I live by the sword. I take my boys every go where I go because I'm paranoid. paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> well... Me and him had an interview scheduled. Okay. And it just so happened that when we actually got a chance to do the interview, Bushwick Bill had died Bad, like yeah. the day before. Right. So Willie asked me to hold on to the interview until Bill was buried. Yes. And then he said, let it rip. I saw the interview. You they weren't the, the best of friends. They were not. And people were upset. Why? They were like, yo, that's so disrespectful. He just died. The family was really upset. Like, uh, uh, the kids, mm -hmm. you know, did an Instagram post. Because he he did the interview right after? Well, because of the things he said about, he, he about didn't Bill. But he was being honest. You know, here's the thing about death. And it's sad because we're always phony. Like, we're phony. Like, human beings are so fucking phony. Like, I think that's why we make up holidays. Like, Christmas has got to be the phoniest shit. It's the phoniest holiday. You know, you know, Christmas season. Let's say the Christmas spirit. You know, right before Christmas, everybody's like, have a happy holiday. What are you doing this? Are you, are you, have a hey, bless you and bless your family. 
The whole year you've been a dick face, <laughs> motherfucker. You've been shitting on me all year. And now you give a fuck about my family and having the Christmas spirit? We're phony, man. And listen, d even during, during when my parents passed, you know, d during the funeral, there were a lot of sh people you'd go like, what the fuck are they doing here? Like, it was phony shit. Like you were, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't even friends with my fucking dad. Get the fuck out of here. Like people are fake. And I kind of give Willie D credit for being honest. Like I'm not going to come and be phony. See, all of a sudden they always tell you to keep it real. But when it comes to death, he goes, no, I've never liked the guy. So I'm not yeah. going to sit there and be phony. Right. And because what if he showed up, they'd be like, you didn't even get along with him. Right. He, you see what I'm he saying? said in the interview that he's not going to show up to the funeral and he did not show up. Are you planning on attending the funeral? No. You're not. Is Scarface planning on attending? Uh, I don't know. Okay. But well, why are you choosing not to attend? See, when you have when somebody have a funeral, man, it's like this. I feel like it's disingenuous for somebody to come to your funeral who you don't like. You know, Bill didn't like me. I ain't like Bill. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth. I, this ain't no phony shit. I know that everybody want to hear some politically correct shit and all that, and you know, but, you know, that's the truth, bro. You know, the truth is the truth. And so, you know, I know that if Bill had his choice, Bill probably see me walking up there like, get that motherfucker out of here. Who the hell wants to get into an altercation at a funeral? And a lot of fights happen at funerals. I talked to a funeral director. Oh. Uh. And because I had I had some stuff go down in my family. I'm not gonna bring it. It was very minor, but it happened. We're all good. And I talked to the funeral director. Okay. Because I went to see my parent, my I'm gonna be honest. I saw my father's laying in rest by myself because some shit went down. I saw him. Listen, I saw my dad. I had a show in Chicago at a university, okay? And my dad's body was laying down the street from that show I was doing. Huh. And I had to do my show, suck it up, do my show, and go see my dad's body right after the show. Mm -hmm. And I saw my dad's body, and I talked to the funeral director, and I said, yeah, I, he said, why did you come by yourself? I said, man, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. I can't, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, that's typical. I said, really? He goes, huh. every time. He said, I've been doing this shit 30-something years. Always fights in, during deaths. People who shouldn't be invited. People, oh, there's always fights. So it happens all the time. Right. Because people come, oh, let me come over. I go, but you never liked them. I'll respect you if you never showed up. And Willie D didn't, what if Willie D shows up and he gets in a fight? He yeah. avoided all and, of that. I think they should respect I, that. He was I'm honest. friends with Willie D. Like, yeah. we're really friends. Like, we talk yeah, all the time. No we hang out. Yeah. Willie D is not going to take the disrespect. You get up in Willie D's face and he say gonna, something slick, he's going to punch you in the and face. And he got hands. <laughs> and he used to be a boxer. He so got yeah. hands. I saw it. I saw <laughs> Willie D. He's like, he got you peeping around corners. Mind playing chess on you. Right. He, he got hands. And he's just an honest dude. I mean, I understand when there's death and people are feeling like, that. he died. How dare you? But once they start to bereavement go is over, because first of all, you got to give them time to let this simmer. And you go, when you really start to assess and go, well, Willie D did the right thing. He wasn't right. fake because he could have got blowback from you guys at a funeral and that's disrespectful to Bushwick Bill. Right. And I had done a bunch of interviews with Willie D while Bill was alive. Yeah. And it was consistent to what he was saying while Bill was alive. It's yeah. not like he held he, his tongue. Exactly. Oh, he's dead now? No, let me go talk yeah. a bunch of shit. No, no. And the pancreatic cancer thing, man, this is, what, this is why, you know, whenever I... Um, and remember I talked about you talked to you last time. I got a lot of like like uh, people talking cuz they about the Dr. Sebi thing and all mm -hmm. that. I always say, man, I go, I wish and whenever I see celebrities when they have ailments, I'm telling you, I always go, man, I wish you guys could see my guy. I wish you could see my guy cuz he's the real deal. You know what I mean? You got a lot of DMs about that. I got I was getting DMs about that. I got a lot of Can DMs you and, I'm free cause, and I'm yeah. sending them to my guy. And like I'll say it again. You know, if you, like I said, you, you, if you ever get in a, a health predicament and you've used all your doctors, all your Russian Jewish doctors, and they're good. I've seen them. I got a few of them in New York. And you guys, 
If you guys, if you you go, I have no other options, you come talk to me and you DM me and I will send you to my guy. And a lot of people have gone to my guy. I'm telling you. And you know what I mean? Black Thought has talked to my guy. Really? Yeah, man. Okay. And when you hear my guy talk and you'll go, oh, this guy's the real deal. He is fantastic, my guy. I Like I said to you guys, I talk about on my podcast in Godfrey We Trust, Gas Digital Network. <laughs> Promo code Godfrey, subscribe. I talk about my guy because he is a fantastic. You know how good you are as a businessman? You see how you eat, sleep, and drink business? You mm -hmm. don't play. He does that. Eat, sleeps, and drinks the body. And that guy is fantastic. You should talk to him one day. Just talk to him. Okay. You I'm should, down. Yeah, you should talk to him. Uh, I'm uh, down. All right. Did you see the new Vic Mensa music video? No, I did not. I know he's from Chicago. Vic Mensa. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He's he's dressed up as a chick, in a Confederate dress with a wow. blonde wig. Well, he's just, he's trying to make a statement. So what is what is this? What's the song called? <sighs> wow. In the, in the video, it's called Three Years Sober." He yeah. fights Mike Pence uh -huh. while wearing a Confederate dress and a wig. Is he makeup? Does he stay in the dress the whole time? Uh, I think that the not not the whole time. Well, no, yeah, he's wearing the dress pretty much throughout the whole video. At one point, some stuff gets. Was it disturbing to you, or was it? What, did it make sense? Was he making a statement? Did you get what he was trying to say? Obviously, he's trying to he's trying to add some shock, shock value. Yeah, Vic Mensa is a Chicago dude. That dude's a real deal, man. Yeah, Mensa, I just think that what what because you know yeah, we this, always this, have this, this battle is, about this black is, men this and dresses. Is, this is probably going to guarantee I'll never get a Vic Mensa interview, but I've never got one anyways, and we, we talked about it, and it never happened, so mm -hmm. fuck, fuck it. I think with Vic Mensa, he was given more chances than pretty much any other artist. Okay. He was signed to Rock Nation. He's very young, huh? Uh, relatively young. 25, 26. Mid-20s. Okay, yeah. He was opening up for Jay-Z for a while. Yeah, that's great. A uh, bunch of people co-signed him. A yeah. bunch of people did music with mm -hmm. him. And he was never able to really get over that hump. Never had a song that really reacted. Why do you think? Not everyone can make a hit song. That's the truth. I mean, it happens sometimes. Not though. everyone can make a hit song. It doesn't matter who is behind you, what producer you have, who does a feature, but, who's but doing the hook, whatever else. This, and then again, you have a little Nas X who comes out of nowhere and one of his first songs becomes the biggest song ever. But he combined forces with a, a country singer. Yeah, but it was the song was already taking off. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that but song it was, was... But that it was song a country was, song, kind of. Yeah, that song was already taking off and there was some controversy about the song and Billy They, Ray, they say Billy they're Ray getting sued now. Over something else. Yeah, okay. Over a different song. Okay. But, yeah, I think that Vic Mensa was given so many chances and uh -huh. so much money got put behind him and everyone looked at him as the next big thing okay. and everything else okay. like that. And he was just has been unable to come up with an anthem, with a huge hit, okay. with, the, you know, with everything else like that. So I feel that this is just, well, let me just do this publicity stunt and wear a dress and have everyone start talking about me. Maybe that'll open the door to, for me getting another chance. Um, that's, that's what I think. I mean, I, I've watched some of his stuff. His stuff is pretty avant-garde, man. He's not like, you know, he, you can't, he, you can, a lot of times when you can't put people in a box, you know what I mean? Like, he, this is the thing about Chicago guys, I think. You know, Lupe Fiasco, Vic Mensa, Kanye. Look at how eclectic all of us. They're, uh, Chicago got a lot of eclectic cat, cats, yeah, man. Yeah, none of them wearing dresses and putting on wigs. Well, I mean, I don't yeah. know what that statement is because you know that's a big thing with me and a lot of cats, like black men in dresses. And and maybe that's just, he's, I, I think, I don't think he's trying to, I don't know. I, I can't really say, I don't know what's in his head, but I know he does a lot of edgy shit and a lot of like yeah. avant-garde stuff. So the black man in a dress with a Confederate flag, that's, He's obviously trying to go for attention. That will make a person go, okay, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I mean, and he's listen, trying to fight Mike Pence. Yeah. So he's trying to make a political statement. Yeah, I mean, listen, Kanye had the whole Confederate flag thing on yeah. his merch uh, a while ago. Uh, that's cool and all. I, I wasn't really feeling it. I mean, is, I, is, I, it, I is the just, song just a sucky song, or is it? I uh, haven't heard the song yet, so I don't know. I'll play you a little clip of so, it. So, I mean, is it a good song, or is it just like, okay, what's going on here? It features Travis Barker. Okay. So it's like a rock song. You know, Travis Barker from what was it, Blink One Eighty Two? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, man, I'm not feeling it. You're not feeling it? I'm, well, I'm not feeling how's it. How's it doing in the charts? I don't think it's doing in the charts. Um, well, well, I mean... Let's, let's see how many, how many views it got. Hold on. Hey, man, see. artists will do what they want to do. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't work, it'll go uh, it's got a hundred. It's gotten 128,000 views, which is damn near nothing for artists of that level. And most artists get like millions. Yeah, like you, you would, million this came out on the 25th. You think it turned off a lot of people? Maybe, you know, and some, you know, you got to understand too, Vic probably, like he's probably like, this is my lane. This is, I like doing off the off the edge shit, crazy shit. That's his, eh. you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think at the end of the day, you still have to have a set of morals and values mm -hmm. going into this. You can't just be like, I will do anything to get on. Amen. I, will, I don't care you're, if I have to do. You're preaching to the choir. You know, I will demean my own race. I will demean my family. I will demean my values. I'll do something that goes against my sexuality. Mm -hmm. I will embarrass whoever. But as and long you, as I get on. And that's you know, all a lot of matters. people do that in my in my field. You could, I mean, people still ask, Godfrey, how the fuck aren't you at a level? What the fuck is going on? I go, well, there's a lot of shit I ain't going to do. I, it's not in my makeup. That's, yep. But I can't shit on another man or whatever for doing what they do. I can't, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know what people's reasonings are. You know what I'm saying? I just interviewed Paula J. Parker, okay, the actress. Mm -hmm. Very interesting conversation. Paula Parker was Paula J. Parker, the the Joy from Friday, the, the girl from, Craig's girlfriend from Friday. Got you. She was also Woo. She was yeah. in a bunch yeah. of movies. Yes, Hustle and Flow. Yes, you know she. Got is. you. Yeah. She's been a working actress for a while now, twenty something years. Yeah, some it takes that long sometimes. But you know, at one point she fell on hard times. She, you know, she was homeless. She she was homeless with a baby and a husband living and, out in L.A. Yeah, and you know, was going to the food stamp office, and people yeah. are recognizing her, and like, yeah, shit, it's like my man from uh, the Cosby dude. Yeah, J Jeffrey. Owens. And you and we put it, he's back on the map now. Yeah, I guess. If he... <laughs> some sort of map. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for example, she she did a Harvey Weinstein movie, mm -hmm. and I said, was there anything inappropriate? She said a lot. It's common knowledge that I did a film for Harvey Weinstein and that, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. You know, but. W was there any inappropriate There behavior? was a lot of inappropriate with, behavior. With Harvey? I'm not, you know, I'll say it like this. I'm a grown ass woman. If you want me to come somewhere, what the fuck am I coming there for at four o'clock in the fucking morning? What the fuck? If, if I want to talk to you about my career, we're going to do it at Miramax Studios, boo-boo. She said she wouldn't, she didn't go. Okay. But she did say that when she got, she, she felt that when she got married, she was blackballed. At one point, you stop working and you start having financial issues. Mm hmm What led up to that whole situation? Getting married. Okay. Mm -hmm. I um, Hollywood is a it's a clique. It's a tight, set family, and um, you don't you you don't jump ship. It's like being in the mafia. It literally is like being in the mafia. Literally like being in the mafia, and especially Black Hollywood. You know, it it's not the mafia that you know. It's the mafia you don't know. You know the faces that you don't know that's hollywood and you don't you don't bring in outsiders like that that was our pussy how dare you god damn it you someone's fucking my pussy you remember the movie you were supposed to be in we went a different direction <laughs> so when she got married they got married. that's, that, that's cool. what she said really that's what she said she she felt and for five years she didn't work right you know, and along the way, she said she made bad decisions. Like, she was offered, like, a role in the Power Rangers, and she turned it down because she thought it was corny. I was very um, diligent about the parts that I chose, but clearly I wasn't very good at choosing parts. I turned down Power Rangers, you know, like... Mm. The, the who turns down the Power Rangers? You know, I thought they were corny. 
you know, but that's what happens when you're doing this without a team of people that get it. You know what I mean? I didn't get it because I turned on the Power Rangers because I thought they were corny. I would have been the first black girl to do uh, whatever those uh, Marvel, whatever that thing is. Super a superhero people. film, I yeah, guess. Yeah, whatever, for all intents and purposes. You could have been the red one, girl. <laughs> Shit. Right. What's wrong with like? It would have been like the first go, black go Power Rangers. Right. Well, I would have fucking been... taken that shit. Yeah, she would have been like the first black female superhero. Why the hero. fuck did you take? I'm sorry, but that's uh, yeah, that was fucked up. You should have taken the Power Ranger. She could have. She was offered the Power Rangers. She turned it down. <laughs> morph, morph, Power Rangers, morph. You could have been. Oh, that would have been me. Because she could have done that and done other stuff. She could have been. She could have gone to Marvel, maybe. You could have gone that, but you yeah. could do other things. You do the kid stuff. Power Rangers is a multi. -bi well, you know, hey man, sometimes, you know, you make that decision, and you know. You yeah, I mean, shit. Ranger. I interviewed Danny Trejo. He was in Spy Kids. Like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> this guy's like a hardcore criminal, like yeah, in real life, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> doing Spy yeah. Kids. Spy you know, kid, but yeah. it worked. Hey, it worked. Hey, it worked. But you know, she said she was blackballed. Mm -hmm. And she said that there were, I said, you know, were there situations where, you know, Hollywood execs were like, well, if you have, unless you have sex with me, you're not going to get this role. And she said, yes. Wow. And they, would she do, did she refuse everything? Uh, it seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're like, yeah, well, yeah. And, and she, I, she wouldn't name any names. Right. But, but it happens. I, 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 because when you look at Hollywood, and it's Holly weird. There's a reason why, for it. And I hear all these stories. And you look at some people that make it and you go, how the fuck are they getting all this shit? Like, literally. And a lot of them are not that great. You're like, how are they getting everything? Sometimes, you know? And you see a lot of talented people. And they're not really, you know, you're, you're, you have that ceiling. You're almost there. You're almost there. But you can't seem to get over that hump. And then if you do, if you keep your integrity, it just takes a little longer. Which is fine. I'm I'm that dude. I don't I don't have it in my makeup, in my DNA, to have somebody put their finger in my ass. That's just not. <laughs> they go, dude. Listen, all I have to do if I let me put my finger in your ass, just let me just let me go like that, just like that. I'm gonna go, just like that. And guess what? You're gonna be the new Iron Man. <laughs> just let come on. Just let me and maybe three fingers. Just let me go like that. For about five minutes. <laughs> let me do this. Dave Chappelle made a joke about that on his Netflix special. <laughs> Remember, like, like the he was like the, the the Harvey Harvey Weinstein thing. He's like, "Come on, over, I'll put you in all the Lord of the Rings." <laughs> like, all right, fine. <laughs> He's like this. Guess what? You will be fighting Darth Vader if you let just just put your dick in my eyeball. That's all. <laughs> just boink boink, poke it a couple times, and you're gonna be fighting Darth Vader. <laughs> I swear to God, just point, point. I just, just put your balls just on my chin. Come on, teabag me just for just three dips, three dips. I swear to God, and, maybe four, but I, I just swear to God, and it'll be you. It and keeps Nicole. going up and up. It'll be you and Nicole. Okay, wait. Okay, smack my ass. I lick your balls three times, and it's you and Nicole Kidman in that book. I swear to God. I swear. You <laughs> see, I don't have it in me, to, and I think. People get a certain energy when they know they can't fuck with certain people. They get a certain energy. They go, nah, we can't even. That ain't even happening. You know what I mean? It's well, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. when I, I realized early on that rate, no one in radio is going to put me on. I, I, you know, as as a DJ, you know, coming up in the DJ thing, yeah. my goal was to be on Hot 97 or Power 105. Of course, or that's normal. Else. It's normal. It's normal. It wasn't, wasn't it's going a normal happen. goal. It wasn't going to happen. And I remember Ebro told me flat out, like, nah, like, we really got to recruit and we don't really fuck with no one else. And, you know, I respected it. it I had no problems with is. that. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, once I started doing films, I realized that, you know, getting someone to green light your project and shit like that is a fucking, is a fucking nightmare and a half. And even Ooh. after you finish the project, you don't really get too much. I mean, let me tell you, I got a check for my appearance on the boondocks. It was three dollars and fifty seven cents. <laughs> this is what this is what my residual came from Damn. the other day. Three, like, why even bother sending that? I check? bet you deposit that shit though. <laughs> it's still in my wallet. But that's uh, crazy. No, but I'm saying so. Yeah. So the thing is, I realized a long time ago that I cannot count on me playing this game with people. You know, having yeah. someone put me on whatever yeah. else. I'm like, let me just do my own shit, own my own shit, and that's over smart. time it'll work out. And it's worked out, I think, way better than if I played that game.
Yeah, way yeah. better. And now, no one can tell me shit. At all. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you talk about the Sirius XM shit. Yeah. You know, um, let's just say I had that job and they fired me. Like, oh, well. <laughs> That's it. No big deal. Like, right. And I actually. Don't give a shit. And actually, when I got fired, man, I actually, this is the first time it ever happened to me. Because I used to, I read a lot about spirituality, law of attraction, what you think becomes reality. I, I've read a lot of those books over the years. And I never really applied them. You know what I mean? Never really applied them. But it's so funny because when I got fired, I literally was like, oh, there's something better for me. I literally, that was the first time it really yeah. kicked in, like, because my show was doing good. I was like, and I go, oh, there must be something better for me. Yeah. You know, because I know, I feel that there's something better for me. Even with these audition, these interviews that I come on, the stuff that I've been, I've been consistently fucking good at what I do. Yeah. Consistently good. No, first time for you years. came on, I'm like, I'm going to have them on together. Oh, I appreciate because that. Because you know something? Like, I've had comedians on. I'm not going to name any names. But they get on here, and it's just like, man, this is boring. Like, this is you're, you're just being lazy right now. Mm. You're not trying to put on a show right now. Now you, not to, You're not being paid for this, so I right. can understand you may not have the same incentive, mm. but you're... But why it's all, be, it's all a show. My thing is, why ask to be on? Yeah, it's all why a show. Like, all of this is what we're doing is all yeah. entertainment. I have to... I, I could be having a shitty day, yeah. like... But I have to... The reason why I love face. this show, I'm be I, when I used to watch it, I used to go, "Oh man, Red Man, all these cats, all these interviews are so great." And the and the, and the demographic that you've reached. I mean, I'm telling you, the love I get in the streets in New York, I fa it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like cats be like, especially when you know when you're doing good, when bus drivers go, "Yo, yo Vlad, you can yeah, yeah, hey." And you know how big the bus drivers are yeah. like, "Hey man, Yo, yo, that Vlad interview, yo, keep that shit up, dog. When you got a steering wheel this big and you go, hey, man, yo, man, hey, I love your shit, dog. And I, when I was in Germany, in the airport, German guy goes, you Vlad, oh, it's so good. I don't mean to be, I'm not Arnold, like, I can't believe your Vlad is amazing. It's my favorite. But it was, it's, it's, I, 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 I made a smart move by being on this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I like that you cause trouble. I like that you make people mad. You do that shit on purpose. You be like, oh yeah, yeah. It's like my my. Listen, nobody's forced to it, be on it, this show. It's all a show. It's, it's a show. All but, but first of all, Vlad says, "Hey, would you like to do the show?" And as an adult, you can say yeah or you say no. I don't give a fuck. Don't you came on here on your own decision. Mm -hmm. You're not forced. And now they say they think you you you, you part of the feds, man. The feds, I'm the police, I'm whoever. Yeah, it's I'm used to it. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. It, let's say let's say Vlad was the feds. I'm like he's white. He's bound to change on us. <laughs> he's bound to do some evil shit. Everyone that comes on the show is wearing a wire that they put on themselves. Yeah, <laughs> you're wearing a wire I'm right now. A wire. There it is. There it is. I mean, you had to put it up your own. I put it we up didn't now. drug you, and you, you woke up. Me. Like you, and will, there's a mic on you. Will you will be interviewed. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, you, you suddenly woke up and you didn't realize there was a mic yeah, there the yeah, whole time. I was forced to drive all the way through <laughs> L.A. in 45 minutes of traffic. Oh, he tra he, 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 he put a, a trance on me. I mean, come on. Mahershala Ali is going to be the new Blade. Yeah, I thought I was. Shit. Oh, you tried? I, I wanted to be. In my head, I said in, your I head. in my head. You I auditioned in your head. I auditioned in my head. <laughs> but they say, like, if you, if you, if you think about things over and over it can manifest you never know yeah Marsh, maybe he gets injured and doesn't want to do it and they gave it to me you never know but good for him man congrats to him he's a fantastic actor by yeah. the way i mean i i wanted to see wesley do it again west because he, west, he may do a little cameo you never know uh, and wesley congratulated him which is cool about yeah. west wesley killed the first two which were, blade one and two great were great and what's great is uh, when I first met Stanley, I was able to meet Stanley. Oh, I never met him. I met Stanley three times. My friend worked for Power Entertainment when he had a little small company with his partner Gil. I met Stan. I hung out with Stanley th for three hours by myself. All you comic book fans, I got lucky. He signed a couple things for me, and he told me. And you know how he talks? He goes, Godfrey, I want to tell you something. You know, uh, Blade was our first blockbuster movie. That's right, Blade. That's what he said. And I said, God damn it. He showed me pictures of Wesley Snipes. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a comic book head, nobody knew who Blade was. No, he wasn't a major. No. 
figure in the Marvel universe. But that's how great Wesley Snipes was. Yeah. Because Wesley's a real martial artist. Wesley's a fantastic actor. And he fucked Blade up, dog. First yeah. one and two. And then they got corny on three because they included more white people. And that's when I knew <laughs> it was jumping the shark. No, I'm, I, I'm not going to. Like Ryan, Ryan Reynolds and Beal, Jessica Beale, that's fine. They're fine actors. But can we have one black superhero? God damn. You well, got 80 white superheroes. We get our own black superhero who can't pay his taxes. And y'all want to fuck with us, man. <laughs> God damn it. Nah, yeah, that's well, my you know, I, interviewed I love Wesley. I interviewed Sticky Fingers. Mm -hmm. he, he played he the Blade was, he TV was Blade show. Also. I went in for that one. You went in for that I one? I auditioned. They gave it to Sticky Fingers. Yeah, I thought he was okay at it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be Blade like a motherfucker. Yeah, and you know, he did tell me that when he met uh, Wesley, Wesley, what, what, you know, Wesley went up to him and was like, you know, what's up, Blade? Recently, they were talking about Blade Four, and Wesley says, "Ain't no, ain't no other Blade except for me." Did you hear that? Yeah, but when he saw me, you know what he said? What did he say? What's up, Blade? Uh. Ooh, facts. Uh. Ask him. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, See? Wesley's not a hater. Cause look at, look at, watch this, watch this. <laughs> See that? I right, take the sword out, Blade. Watch this. I'm a vampire, and I'm proud of it. Oh! <laughs> Not bad, right? I got a little blade, but I could be blade like a motherfucker, but you never know. You never know. Marshall might go, yo, give it to Godfrey, man. That's my man, right? You never know. But I think he Maybe if you take him out, you know, you know, hit him, you know. No, man. hit him in the leg like a First of all, Marshall Ali like... is a fantastic actor from House of Cards, and he's just he's been doing it 27 is that, is years. That where, is that how he started? House of Cards? No, uh, he's been doing it a long time, oh, but House of Cards is yeah. when I first really saw him. He's really good at House of Cards. I, I saw him the first time. I really saw him was in Luke Cage. Oh yeah, as um Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth. He yeah. was good, but he was in House of Cards. Yeah, I didn't. I never really watched that. Oh show. my God, he was great. And so he's from Oakland, by the way. Shout out. Is to he him. Oakland? Yeah. Right on, man. That's and he right. and he and he is a, a great voice, great presence. He might he might tear that shit up. He's got two Oscars also. And he's two Oscars, two Oscars. The boy is bad. He's a bad boy. That's a so bad it, it went from one one bad motherfucker to another bad motherfucker. So. Hey man, good choice, good choice, good choice. I agree. Good luck, and I I cannot wait to see Blade again. And it should have been rebooted by now because uh, Superman, Batman, they've been all been rebooted nineteen times. Right. They got motherfucking. Uh, uh, they had George Clooney. They have every white person's doing Batman. God damn. <laughs> Why can't they have Black Man and Robert? <laughs> Black Man and Robert. Yeah. <laughs> Black Man and Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so who's, what's Robert's role? Robert's just like he just gets my shit. Yo, get my shit, Robert. Okay, man. Damn. Like you know, what I, mean? I made you a new weapon. This shit don't work, man. Fuck you doing? All right, man. I I'll, I'll get some. He, he sells. We're off Amazon. Yeah, he got our Amazon. He gets bootleg shit. Black man and Robert. I don't know where this footage is, but mm. I remember I interviewed Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Like. Was man. A long, that was a long time man. ago. Yeah. Shout out to Charlie. Real, Charlie really, really Murphy, cool man. dude. And I remember. I don't know where this tape is, mm -hmm. man, because I never put this out. We were in Jersey at like a little cafe. Right. And I'm like, do you think Eddie will ever come back and do another stand-up? And he said, probably not. I said, really, why? He goes, well, because if he tried to do it, if he tried to jump back in, he would be whack. He'd have to spend about a year or more on the stand-up circuit Getting his chops back. Yeah, he hasn't done a fucking stand up in like in 30, 30 years. years. Like, man, when, I, when I'm on stage for three days, I'm like, oh man. Because stand up is a, it's a really strange thing. Stand up a is a thing you have to be on, on it a lot. Like, it's just a, because it's so, like, it's it's so difficult. And so, and to be present, and you, 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 gotta, you gotta be doing it a couple times a week. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even bullshitting you. Yeah. You know, it's scary shit. Adam Sandler started to get back into it. And he was frightened, I remember. Well, I, I can tell you, and I'm not going to say any names, yeah. but when I when I was hanging out with you the other night, mm -hmm. I saw a very big difference between the different stand-up comedians. Mm. I saw a world of difference. And it was like, wow. Like, uh, we are not all equal here, <laughs> like, on this stage. Like, and it don't matter. some of these motherfuckers are the ones that got, a, they got more specials than you. Yeah. And, and you're blowing them off the motherfucking stage, and they're like on their third special. Yeah, that's but they but they found a way to make the lot of, and a lot of these comics are doing TED talks. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I'm thinking we should reverse it. Why don't we go to TED talk and do a special? 
do an actual comedy special on a TED, a TED talk. talk. Because it seems like they're doing TED talks on these Netflix so specials. Do you think that Eddie will come back and kill it, or do you think he's just going to take his check and it'll be like, I right, well, I don't think they're going to give him a check and he he not do nothing. He has to do something. Well, you know, 70, 70 well, Eddie Murphy should be able to, I, listen, Eddie Murphy, I don't give a fuck what he does. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's the greatest, he's the baddest motherfucker on the planet. But I think that Eddie Murphy, I think that just e ego-wise and reputation-wise, because the last special he did was in 87, was Raw. Yeah. I mean, that's a long, that's that's eras. 87. 30 years, 32 30 years. 30 years, going through the 90s, you didn't do shit. The early 2000s, you didn't, didn't do, do shit. shit. That's a, and and he, ten kids later, maybe ten nine ten kids later, I would I think. But my thing is this, and I hope Eddie Murphy maybe watches this. I think that I I know it'll be smart for him. Talk about Charlie, do stories about Charlie. I mean, he should talk about like you know talk about his children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do stuff about his children. Do stuff about like you know the shit that he used to talk about. I I think that he can do all of that. Like all the shit that he's been through, you know what I mean? He could talk about some of the movies that he that weren't as good as he thought they would be. He could talk about, he's like, man, what the fuck was Pluto Nash, man? What the <laughs> fuck was that, man? I'm sorry, I apologize, man. I apologize for that. That was some, <laughs> that was some bullshit. That was some bullshit. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had to get a check, man. Fuck you, suck my dick, you know. But you know what I mean? I think that if he does it, he he. I don't think he should rush it. I think he should spend at least one to two years on honing his skill. Because listen, he's gonna have to show up to clubs. They're gonna go crazy. I think they should set up private place things for him. I think he should work on his shit. He should surround himself with other comics. Because you know every comic's gonna be like, dude, I'll write for you for free. You're right. Eddie Murphy. And he knows plenty of comedians. And I already know the motherfuckers that are gonna be around him. But he should have a, a, a think tank of people with him. Because Eddie Murphy is a natural funny and he's probably one of the most talented human beings on the planet. He can do voices. He can do... I, it, did you see him do the Sammy Davis thing? When he's, yeah. He's, he's like, listen, babe. He's fantastic. <laughs> he can change his voice. He should do that. He should do voice changes. He should do character stuff. I think he should work on a nice little... Uh, he should work on a nice little act, but I think he should go to the clubs and he needs yeah. to work his chops out for at least two a year or two. Don't do anything yet. Right, because I looked at some of his worst movies... A thousand words. Remember that one? Oh, with the trees and that. Yeah. yeah. Crap. I, I thought Pluto, Metro. Pluto a, Nash. I think Metro was a sleeper movie. Metro was pretty damn good. Uh, he was serious in that movie. Eddie Murphy can do serious roles. And I'm looking forward to Dolomite. You know, he did Dolomite. He's doing Dolomite. He did Dolomite. He, yeah. he could, that, Eddie can act. Eddie can do anything. Yeah. And I think the stand-up part, I'm sure he regrets not like content, like sticking with it. Sticking with it. Because Eddie's, the, you know what I mean? It would have been cool if he stuck with it. Even if he didn't do it a lot, if he just went in and out like Seinfeld. Seinfeld still does comedy. He comes back. Yeah, he shows up to clubs. He shows up to he clubs. He'll randomly show up to a New York club. And Eddie is bigger than Seinfeld. Like, Eddie is is like another level. You got to understand what Eddie has done for comedy. He literally yeah, made... No, you could SNL tell, was number one because of Eddie Murphy. Right, you could tell you know? Seinfeld... I mean, Seinfeld even said that Eddie was better than him. Yeah, Eddie's but when funny. They did, when yeah. they did that, uh, comedians and cars. But but cars. but Eddie gave him props and said, "Seinfeld, you're like one of the greatest comedians because he is writing wise, just his 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 tech his technique, and he's very wise. Seinfeld's a very wise comedian. You know what I mean? And I've I've gotten advice from Seinfeld, and this is what Seinfeld told me when I was in my ninth year because I'm in the documentary comedian with Jerry Seinfeld, and he said, "How long have you been doing comedy?" I said, nine years." He said, "That's your age in comedy. You're a nine year old." Don't ever forget that. <laughs> Bang. Boom. Every comic should know. Whatever year you're in, that's your year in comedy. So if you're five years, shut the fuck up. You're not a fucking professional. <laughs> I, I, you got a lot of comedians. I got people that go like this. Hey, I'm a comedian. How long have you been doing? A year. You're not a fucking comedian. Because T.K. Kirkland, which, which is so funny because everybody is making fun of T.K. Kirkland going... Yo, I think TK taught Jesus how to do comedy too, right? <laughs> yeah, TK, like there's this TK's weird effect fantastic. that happened where it's... in all the Vlad TV YouTube comments, no matter what it's about, <laughs> yeah. someone will put in TK into the story, <laughs> taking credit for whatever TK is happening. TK introduced Moses to right. Pharaoh. Right. TK and TK. But, it, but I'm sorry to say this, TK Kirkland's not lying. I'm sorry, he's not. TK but, got me out to New but, York. Man, let me tell you something. Someone sent me 
these old NWA videos. And you see them. Screenshots em. of TK in the and actual you video. You see them. I thought it was like the no. DJ or something. No. no, that's TK. That's TK Kirkland. He was T in the DOC video. TK Kirkland he was got a me my first manager. TK Kirkland, when I got my first manager, I lived in an apartment and with Viola Davis I'm not, when she was at Juilliard. I'm not fucking around. This is 100th and West End. She was my roommate for a couple months. TK Kirkland hooked me up with my managers. He got me you, out to You Chicago. and Viola Davis shared an apartment? I, yeah, it was four people, four roommates. Okay. And I had the one, and Viola took me to my room. I'm not even bullshit. I was with my friend Bernadette, who was in Love Jones. We, I drove 20 hours from Chicago in a U-Haul truck, and Viola Davis was the first person I met at the door at hmm. 100 in West End. Wow. And now you know I got to get famous because everybody that I meet is more famous to me <laughs> and my shit. And TK Kirkland is real. It's the truth. You know what I mean? T yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, D.L. Hughley would tell me, you know, TK Real. stories. And it's the truth. TK's yeah. been around, dude. He's been around. <laughs> they can say whatever fucking what, but I love that running joke. Oh, TK. Oh, okay. TK introduced Hulk Hogan to the... <laughs> a T to the motherfucking K and get your ass in the car. <laughs> That's my man. That's I, my big I, brother. I love TK. That's man. my big brother. I, I love TK. And I love TK that he's loves popular. me. Like it's a he's, great relationship. And he's honest like, and he's real. And that's what you're gonna get from TK, man. But did you hear the Nas's new, new album yet or no? No, I haven't heard it. Okay, so but gonna, you didn't like it? it? Let's I like, talk about I actually, it. I actually liked it. Why don't we talk about okay. it? So so Nas yeah. dropped the lost tapes too. Yes. I saw advertisement on that. I yeah. saw it all in the, in the Instagram and stuff like that. I heard the first song, Jero of Rap. Have you heard I, that song? I, uh, you, you, let's, 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 you, said, you said you hated it. <laughs> you you going to let off on Nas, boy. <laughs> you going to make Nas do good shit. <laughs> Nas, I'll prove this motherfucker. I'm going to play you the first single off yes. it. Go ahead, Nas. Nas is just, listen. All Nas is doing, you know, with the times now, that's all. He's just letting you know I can flow like that too. Nas, that was what was wrong with that? That was nice. Nah, Nas, listen. How's the rest of the album? And that's the thing. I heard that and I'm like, oh, I was not feeling it. Okay. And I remember me and me and Jamar talked about this. I could see what Nas was doing on that song. He was trying to flip it. Yeah. Completely different beat. Nothing it's, wrong with he, that. He, you know, he's referencing Al Jarreau, who's a great jazz musician. Al Jarreau, like scatting. Al yeah, Jarreau exactly. was known for his scatting. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. called uh, Scat Attack. Right. You know, Jarreau of Rap, parentheses, Jer scat, right. scat Attack. I feel like Nas could not pull a song like that off. You need like a faster, clearer rapper, like a twister. Or maybe like well, a, yeah. a Kendrick Lamar who who could harmonize better. And he, he, who that's could, his style who of could rap. Rap faster, yeah. more clear. Nas is a little bit. Nas little, is a, a little, more mellow rapper. A little more mellow, a little yeah. more mush mouth. You know, what I mean, yeah. not, I'm not going to say he's just a completely mush mouth rap, but he's a little bit. He's not as mush mouth by. What do you mean by mush mouth? Because mush mouth was a character in Fat Albert. Right. Umba ubi diba duba. No, not that. I'm just saying that he doesn't enunciate his words. As clear as someone like a twister. Oh, you mean when it's going that fast, especially when it's going uh, fast. I got exactly. you. I got you. I was exactly. like mush mouth rapper. Yeah. I was like, you yeah. know, and you know, I Nas is in my is in my uh, Mount Rushmore. Of, I know. Of rappers. He's in a Fuck lot of people. That shit. He's in I'll, a lot of people. He's fantastic. That, that song he's one there, of the greatest ever. That song there, I was like, eh, but I went and listened to the album a mm -hmm. bunch of times. And I could say this is probably his best project since Stillmatic. Still Illmatic. Okay, Still, cool. Stillmatic. Stillmatic. Okay. Yeah. You didn't like Illmatic? No, I love Illmatic. Illmatic, right? But, but that's still But that's came great, later. though. But you know, this was better than Nasir. It was better than yeah. Godson. But also remember, he had a lot of dead. good singles too. Off he has a lot some cool of these singles. other albums. I just don't... think that beat wise, he did a better job on this. He he used he used some producers that that. You know, got it. Like, they understood the way he rocks. Yeah, Riz, Riz, some producers yeah Rizza, don't know. Rizza's on it. P Riz, Rock is there on we go. it. Yeah, he got no, no ideas. He on got it. with the right crew. Yeah, yeah, he, he got, got with the right crew. Yeah, good. It was, it was a cool. It was a cool project. Has you know, Swiss Beats is on it. Like, cool. This was a cool project. You good. know, and some of these songs are kind of old. At one point, he references references himself to being thirty six, right? And he's like forty six now, I right? Think, or something. That's like that. great. Yeah. He looks. 30, 
yeah, still exactly. looks amazing. But yeah, but I'm glad. I'm, see, I'm glad because I always look forward to new Nas music. You know what I mean? Because I bring up Nas. Right. I bring up Nas when, I, when I'm when i shitting on people on stage. I go, fuck these old millennial mumble dumbass rappers. I'm fucking Nas. I'm Wu-Tang. I'm, I always bring his name up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always bring Nas's name up. So, you know, I, I'm glad that you li- you finally... It's a good project. It's better, like it. it better than Nasir. His last album was Kanye. Right. Uh, you know, some of the hooks... I like his. I like the one he did with Kendrick Lamar. That little single he did with Kendrick Lamar, that was dope. I think it was Kings or something like that. What song yeah. was that? You didn't, yeah, it's in black and white. It's Kings, him and uh, Kendrick. It's dope. I loved it. Uh, what, what Forgotten? Is, is that what it is, maybe? But it's awesome. Yeah, it's not called Forgotten yeah. Angels featuring Kendrick Lamar and Nas. Oh, love that shit. Yeah, I'll listen to that again. Yeah, I like it. Um, You know, it was a cool project. Good. It was a cool project. It was cool beats. I feel like... Nas has kind of got back to sort of his, his you know, his pocket. Well, well the, thing, the thing about Nas, he's such a great businessman, too, and he's doing such great business shit. And his, that, that sweet, um, he has that, that breakfast. That sweet, sweet chick. Sweet yeah. chick. That, I mean, he's doing great stuff, and I'm glad. Invested in a bunch of companies. And, yeah, and cool. now I think that he can really get back to what he was doing before. You know what I mean? I really like, would like to see that because I am a Nas fan, regardless of how much you fucking hate. You kiss my ass, Nas. You are the greatest, brother. <laughs> Fuck that. Rock Kim, Nas, Wu Tai, all you gay. Don't ever listen to this man. He's just a fucking. <laughs> I'm a fan too. Oh, yeah, I know you. I know I'm you're a fan. I'm a, I'm a fan. You like too. to bust that, his balls. And that's, the, that's the whole point of. You like to bust his balls. But I, I can't imagine. You know, it's like jokes, man. You can't imagine trying to do a new album. Like, in, in your. Because your, your, they show. They, there's, thing, there's a thing on Instagram where they have Timberland. And Jay Z listening to beats, and he hears that, brush your shoulders off. First he's playing some other beats, and and Jay Z's going, okay, okay, okay. He goes, yeah, I got something else for you. How you like this one? And Jay Z's like, whoa, 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 yo, yo, oh shoot, yo, this is yo, it's hot right here, yo. So I mean. That could have been a shitty beat. That could have been a shitty song. Who knows? It's like, I don't know. Because when I hear beats, I go, I like that song. That beat is dope. And someone goes, that shit was yeah. whack. Well, a great artist knows what beat to pick for, for their particular, for their vocals yeah. and their style. But here's the you know, and, and the thing is, is like, whenever I bring up the Nas beat thing, like, yeah, well, what about his lyrics? I'm like, I never said nothing about his lyrics. But he, at, at no but point beats, do, I, beats do drive the song. Let's be real. Well, you it's, gotta have it's, it's yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. It's both. Here's another thing. You too. know, I mean, I think about like grinding. Grinding is not a hot beat. It's just a fucking drum beat that you could do on, on your desk. C- c- but c- c- the clips that, came that in. That beat is hot though. The Fuck clip, that. but the clips. Yeah, a lot but of people the beat is fuck, hot. The, a lot of people gonna fuck that beat up. Yeah, but the beat is dope they because it was simple. Sometimes the simple shit. Sometimes a motherfucker can be hitting his knee and it's like, dude, it's I dope like that. is dope because the clips and Pharrell made well, it dope. Of course they made it dope, it but all that beat came that, that, together. That was hot. That was hot. It was hot because we heard the final version. Well, it's a whole right. lot different than when you hear a beat yeah. before there's a chorus, before there's any verses, no, course, before there's any bridges, the before hard. there's breakdowns. But that stuff you is have hard. to you know, here's 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 what I think. A lot of times, we when when songs come out and they, you didn't expect, they didn't do as well as you expected. You've been to you've been to sound recordings. You've been to the yeah. sound. You you notice how loud the shit is, and it's the best shit ever. Right. But then there's somebody that has like an AM radio, and they turn on. They're not in the because a lot of shit sounds great when it's super loud and yeah. and you got the best high. And every, everyone's hyping. Right, up everyone's in the like, studio. yo, son. They in there like this, yo. Dude, yeah. but not everybody has those same speakers in no, their cars. I, I remember like Eminem hearing a story about how Eminem has this like, like a Ford Escort that he just keeps, and whenever and he when does he, a song, you play it in he there. He goes outside, to see if it's good. Puts it in the CD that's player of right. the Ford Escort. And he listens to it there. He goes, "That's goes, a dope song on AM." Yeah, Hell yeah, that shit is tight. <laughs> that's smart. Yeah, you know, with my Be- four inch speakers. Okay, you're, if this you're, sounds you're, good. There, you're yeah. in the fucking what. Uh, the the highest level speakers. You have the best equipment, sound equipment, and you're like this, yo, that shit is hot. But then you go into somebody's car whose speakers aren't as great, and you're like, oh, it doesn't sound as good. Your yeah. shit should sound good on your clock alarm. That's when you know a song is tight. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 
Godfrey, always Yo. a pleasure. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram, Comedian Godfrey, and my website is godfreycomedian.com to see all my dates. And as I said before, my podcast, In Godfrey We Trust, on the Gas Digital Network, Tuesdays and Fridays, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, promo code Godfrey, subscribe, all that. Thanks for having me again, man. That's what it is. All right. Until next time. Peace.